Fat loss is almost always a sensitive topic. When it comes to building muscle and strength, while there is some dogmatism, most lifters will at least acknowledge the idea that there are different roads leading to the same place. But when it comes to weight loss, on the other hand, nearly everyone seems to fall adamantly into one of two camps. Either weight loss is a simple math equation, calories in versus calories out, and anyone who says otherwise just isn't trying hard enough, or weight loss is almost impossible because genetics or health issues won't allow it. These guys will do everything they can to refuse responsibility. As you might expect, the category someone belongs to usually has a lot to do with the results they've experienced themselves thus far. If I'm being honest with you guys, I've spent the majority of my life in that first category. While I never took it so far as to say basic calories in versus calories out is all that matters, as obviously 1,500 calories of, say, processed canola oil is not the same thing as 1,500 calories of a micronutrient-dense whole food diet. But for the most part, I've spent a lot of time believing that any mention of metabolism or thyroid function was just a cop-out, an excuse. While I do still believe that most simply don't understand the effort required to lose a substantial amount of fat, my last bulk and cut cycle has opened my eyes to a few possibilities. Keep in mind that I'm not advocating for either camp here with this video. I just want to share my recent experiences and hopefully give you something to think about. Today, I want to share with you what I call the stoke the fire method. Now, this is nothing new, and I am by no means the first guy to figure this stuff out, but let's get into it. In the past, I was always in a rush. I'd bulk up 30 pounds in a couple months, or consistently drop 5 pounds a week on a cut. This always led to way too much fat gain or too much muscle and strength loss. This time around, however, I decided to take things slow. I bulked up over an entire year and a half and cut down relatively slowly as well, roughly 1 pound a week. What I found this time around is that fat loss isn't a linear process. When I was in a 1500 calorie deficit or whatever it was in the past, I was able to seemingly bypass the non-linear fat loss by also losing lots of muscle. I didn't realize this at the time, of course. But this time around, the truth became very clear. There's more going on here than simple calories in versus calories out. For the first time, I kept hitting plateaus. I'd make slow, steady progress, then my weight would stop dropping for a full week. I'd drop the calories lower and nothing would happen. Keep in mind, I generally have an easy time dropping weight and cheat days aren't something I typically feel the need for. Lucky for me, I was cutting weight over the holiday season, which meant a few big meals. What I learned is this. I would hit a weight loss plateau and nothing could change it. Continuing to eat in what should have been a caloric deficit wouldn't change anything. My weight stayed the same. After being stuck for a while, for one reason or another, I'd end up having a higher calorie day. Thanksgiving was a good example of this. The next day, I'd have gained two or three full pounds in scale weight. This is largely from building up energy reserves and the increased water retention, but then the magic would happen. For a few days eating in a deficit again, my weight would slowly go back to where it was before the high calorie day. But once I'd hit day three or four, I'd drop a full one to two pounds below where I'd been plateaued at. The high calorie day acted as a slingshot, rebounding me from that higher weight to an even lower weight than before. From here, slow, steady progress would continue for about a week and a half until I'd hit a plateau again. I began strategically adding in high calorie days as a way to propel myself forward and it worked every single time. Now, if you've been doing this thing for a while, there are a few basic logical solutions you may have come to from this. Maybe the extra energy led to me moving more throughout the day, which led to the increased weight loss. I can't deny this possibility, but I don't think a bit of extra fidgeting throughout the day would lead to such a sudden and drastic drop in weight. Keep in mind, I trained every day in some way regardless of the food intake. Or maybe the extra energy led to better performance in the gym, which led to me burning more calories. Again, I can't deny the possibility, but I still don't think this is enough to see such a large drop in weight so quickly. So with all that said, maybe there is something else going on here. Perhaps the metabolism blamers were onto something here. My theory as to why this works comes down to the simple concept of adaptability. Our bodies are incredibly adaptable. When you eat less, perhaps your body starts to conserve, which leads to less weight loss. Perhaps by eating more on one day, the body decides it doesn't need to worry as much about conserving weight. 
and it ends up letting go of more in the near future. There are any number of possibilities explaining why this works, but at the end of the day, why doesn't really matter. If it works, it works. Finding out the why of things is something humans do because we find it enjoyable, but knowing why something does something won't change the outcome. So the next time you're trying to lose weight, maybe every one to two weeks, you might try stoking the fire, so to speak, with a higher calorie day. Not only will this be mentally refreshing, you may just see some better progress. And before we end this video, I do want to mention that this seems to work in reverse as well. If you're plateaued and can't seem to get any heavier on a bulk, a strategic low calorie day may be what you need. I experienced this plenty of times on my bulk. I'd be stuck for a while, say screw it and eat less for a day or two, drop a bit of weight, go back to bulking and end up heavier than before. Consider a fire. If you want that fire to burn bright, sometimes the answer is adding more wood. But sometimes, making more space for the wood that's already there leads to a much bigger flame. And that's all I have for you today, guys. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them below. And if I feel like I have enough to say on the topic, I'll try to respond with a video. So I hope you like this one. And until next time, thanks for watching.